Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for coming. Uh, the other two. There's uh, 10 episodes of it. They're all great. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, Chris Kelly and Sarah Schneider, uh, who um, the creators and writers of the show. Uh, when I was at Saturday Night Live, my last, I think, three or four years there, um, they joined as writers. And immediately, they, it was clear that they are brilliant. I just knew it. I, I, as soon as they started like writing sketches, they were, their sensibility was just so funny. You've seen all of, all of these sketches. But after I left the show, I remember I would watch, and these sketches would come on, and I'd like text um, one of the producers, like, who wrote this sketch? It was always these guys. So I, my connection with them was not just as friends, but I thought, oh, these guys are destined for greatness. And I think this reflects that. Um, so uh, let's bring them out. Uh, uh, Chris Kelly. Hi, Chris. So we'll do an hour with you. Uh, uh, Sarah Schneider. Helene York. And Drew Tarver. The How do you guys feel about um, the pilot? Now that you've done all the, uh, you know, the episodes, how does the pilot appear to you? Well, I think we've noticeably aged. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I look younger in that. <laughs> At a rough year. <laughs> and how our voices have changed. <laughs> how long ago did you shoot this? Year and last, a half? Yeah, last yeah. summer. And how did you do the, the casting? Like, did, did, did you know of their work already, or was it auditions? We knew Drew from UCB, because I, I, I did UCB. We're kind of in the same world for a while. Mm -hmm. And then we knew Helena from High Maintenance. I mean, from a couple things, but I... I remember early on in the auditions being like, I really want to audition this woman from High Maintenance who I just thought was so funny. And woman. This woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the I'm a girl, Chris. In the, pi <laughs> yeah, in the pilot, she's a girl, but in episode yes. two, she's suddenly a woman. <laughs> there was eight months, so she's, yeah. Um, and then for the kid, for, for Chase, who's in real life, his name is Case. He's here. Which is insane. Ah. Um, Woo! Yeah, he's here. Oh, hey. Yeah. <laughs> We just kind of auditioned the same way. We saw like a bunch of kids kind of from everywhere. And then we also uh, looked on like YouTube and Musical.ly, which is this like lip syncing app and just kind of scoured for <laughs> anybody that like seemed like they would be great. And we found him and he lived in Colorado and he flew in and auditioned and he first was audition. It was his first audition ever. So good. Isn't that in First audition. Yeah. yeah. No, done nothing else before. No. Ah, you did great. <laughs> uh, you really did. Um, well, the character's name is... Chase and Case's name is Case. We were like, what would be the most annoying thing to deal with for <laughs> yeah. the rest of your life? Yeah. <laughs> but was the, the, the choice of the name Chase, uh, I saw it as commentary on the US banking system. Mm. Was that, <laughs> yeah. Well, in well, an earlier draft, the show. <laughs> yeah. In an earlier draft, the character's name was Bank of America. Oh, right. <laughs> Dreams. We pitched it as yes. a satire of the financial industry, and then it kind of turned into something else, yeah. Uh, how did you, you know, from the work that I know from you guys, I was very surprised to see this subject matter. How, uh, what was your entryway into the world of pop music? Like, were you ever witness to any of the behavior? And a lo lot of the show is, you know, there are publicists and choreographers and stuff. So did that come from that experience or what, what drew you to that? Well, we knew, coming from SNL, one of our favorite things to do at SNL was write music videos. We wrote a lot of the music videos with the girls in the cast, and that was always our most fun times and the, the pieces that we love looking back at. And so when we were deciding what to write a show about, we were like, how can we tell grounded stories with a dynamic that's similar to ours in New York City, but also write music videos? Mm -hmm. And so from that kind of dichotomy of the two, we kind of came into this world, and then we just did a, had to like do a lot of research about how it worked. So you did have to do research, do you, or, or was there someone, well, or, or was there like a sort of scenario that you kept coming back to? Was there like, and you don't have to say who it is, but like, do you feel like, uh, do you feel like there was like, did you come back to like a certain uh, artist or time period or movement or anything like that? Or no? no. You could say no. 
No, we. I think we just liked the world. I think we just wanted pop culture combined with a grounded storytelling. But I mean, I guess Justin Bieber was sort of like a jumping off point no, in some ways. There, while we were all yeah, there at when SNL, he hosted. So was this like a leading question? Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> I, I see now. <laughs> well, because I don't know if you remember this, but so when Justin Bieber hosted, he so on Tuesday, like on writing nights, the hosts go around from um, like office to office and meet all the writers, and the writers tell the host that week, like, here's some ideas we're thinking of, and then that's usually when the host is like, I can really do an Australian accent, please write me one, and then they can't, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, and that week instead of Justin, B I don't know if I remember, Justin Bieber didn't go around, but his manager Scooter Braun went around in his stead, and he was very nice, but we were like, where's Justin, and they were like, oh, bad news on that front. Um, we're trying to get his body jacked, so I fed him a bunch of raw eggs, and he is puking his guts out. <laughs> and so, like, Justin was on an, like, all egg or egg white or something diet and was, like, so sick. And oh, I was happens. like, I will take that and make fun of it. <laughs> um, so, but the show isn't, like, based on that, but, like, little kernels of things like that we would take, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't seem cynical in that way. No, it's Ever not. It's like, not. It's not. It, it doesn't. It, it's not attacking it. It does feel like a sort of... Uh, pointing out or celebrating that part. Yeah, and the characters aren't really like similar to that in any way. That's yeah. just like a story that was funny to us, yeah. Speaking of SNL, I just want to let you guys, I want to tell you about some of the sketches that these guys did, all right? <laughs> First of all, do you know the high school theater show one? It's like this one where like, oh, it's the best thing ever. And then my memory of it, you know, it's this one where like, these like students are trying to put on a show and <laughs> And they've done it a few times, but like their, their performance of it, right? It's sort of like political. They're like angry, but they're misinformed. <laughs> so my memory of it was like, oh, that was such a funny sketch, but then I rewatched them. You guys, it's so good. <laughs> These are so great. Um, I, I was almost gonna act it out, but I won't. <laughs> I won't. But it was after I was, no, I can't. Well, there's one, right? There's one. There's one. <laughs> Where Kyle Mooney, dies on stage. He's like, hey, I'm sick. I'm dying. People pass him by. He, 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 drop, he drops it on stage. They're like, let's check his ID. Let's see what it says. His driver's license says, the earth. <laughs> so good. Uh, do it in my twin bed. That was incredible. I was, um, did, a lot of music, definitely. And you come from music somewhat, right? Or a lot. Yeah, I minored in music composition in college. Wow. And I did not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you're a, I saw that you are a dancer, though. Like, you, for the Stink video, you were yeah. definitely. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, okay this, this, I will not, please just let me, just indulge me for this the last one. Also, the Dance of the Snowflakes is one of my favorite <laughs> sketches ever of SNL. So what it is. <laughs> And this is going somewhere. The, uh, this, this relates to all of this. Um, uh, so it's these like, it's John Goodman's the host, right? And so they dress up in these snowflake outfits, right? So the sketch starts and there's like this sweet music. It's Vanessa and Keenan, and they're all like an 80. And so they start dancing to this music. They're like this, right? It's like a, it's like a pageant show or something. Yeah. And then you start hearing what's going on in their minds and they go, is this dumb? <laughs> <laughs> and Oh, it's the it's it, it's really brilliant, and I think like I was trying to think of like thematically what you guys do, and I feel like with this show there's a sort of element of embarrassment. You embrace embarrassment, and it's not like humiliation. It's just like being slightly embarrassed. So throughout the episodes, I saw that there was a little bit of that. How do I turn that into a question? Uh, uh, what time is it? Uh, no, but that we, like, there is, I guess, especially maybe for Drew, a lot of humiliation in the show. Yeah, there's something about my face that just works for being humiliated. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I know my boyfriend watched the whole season, and they're like, God, you really put him through something. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know, we kind of wanted, I mean, it's a comedy. It's a comedy, like, first and foremost, but we wanted it to be grounded, and we wanted it to be... Like, I think the premise for the show sounds like it could easily be like these two are just jealous of their brother and that's it. But we wanted it to not really be that. We wanted it to be like 
without getting too dramatic, what are real things that you would be frustrated or worried about in your own life that would become exacerbated by your little brother? So mm -hmm. there's a lot of humiliation along the way, but it's frustration with your career or comparing yourself to other people or relationship problems or not being comfortable in your sexuality or being comfortable in your skin and like all those problems their characters would have to deal with in a normal season if just adding this like little brother element, like how will it, how will it exacerbate all those problems? So. So there's yeah. also an inherent like embarrassment in watching any of these young kids on YouTube because they are so confident, fully formed, <laughs> their identities are solid and they're like 11 years old and <laughs> watching that and just being like, yikes, I am not there <laughs> and I'm 35. <laughs> and so that's a lot of like yeah. the stories we told her in that yeah, yeah, yeah. feeling. And do you guys as actors, I, since I don't know you, you know, I mean as uh, personally, um, do you feel like you're anything like your characters at all? Because I couldn't, to me it seemed, I just believe it. I believe that you're somewhat like them. Yeah, no, I'm much cooler in real life. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, Never uh, embarrassed. Yeah, Chase is based on you. Yes, Chase yeah, is based yeah. on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean like, I, you know, before, you know, months before auditioning for this, I was getting like hum humiliated at a Tostitos audition. <laughs> just like, take a fun selfie and eat the guacamole. Um, so, yes. Uh huh. Very. Even after the pilot, I was like, I don't know if this is going to pick up, uh, get picked up. Where's Tostitos? <laughs> I think what's scary about watching something like this, and especially with, because Chris and Sarah is writing, it just feels like it comes out of your face like you're actually saying it, mm -hmm. is that you watch yourself on screen just being actually yourself, and you're like, that's who people know and are friends with on purpose? Like, that's not a character. That's terrifying. And what were these guys like on set? Monsters. Monsters. <laughs> <laughs> no, great. They, like, I mean, we were talking about this the other day. They'll, they'll like, they, they, they say, like, hey, great job. <laughs> Which, like, Is sometimes amazing. you don't get as actors. Sometimes you just do stuff and you, like, look and be like, am I doing it? Like, uh -huh. and they're so great and, like, uh, it was just so easy to work for them, and like the writing is so good and so funny. It's it's it was a blast. Yeah, you guys are never um, from when I've seen you work. You're never mean or angry. It always seems like you get very stressed. You get but not stressed, yeah, but yeah. it's a very quiet, controlled <laughs> stress. A quiet. I see you guys whispering. A quiet to stress, each other. and then a great job. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It's like true. The 10 seconds before his anecdote. Yeah. Is like yeah. <laughs> we got all these pictures back no, no. from the season, and it's all just like the actors like laughing, loving, having the best time. And then there's one picture of Chris and I, and we're both just like, <laughs> it's so. Intense. They were like, just go through and pick out which ones you want. And we were like, they're all the same. It's us two out looking at a piece of paper, like, oh, we can't. <laughs> uh, but it, it, it like, N not to be cheesy, but it, di it did make it easier because we like wrote it and we were excited about the scripts, but then they're so good and Case is so good and then Molly Shannon and Ken Marino and then Wanda Sykes plays a huge part in the show and this guy Josh, Josh Sagara who plays her ex-boyfriend. There's just so many and a lot of SNL people came in, did an episode yeah. here and there, like Beck. Um, so it was just fun every day to have like a new person or a couple people show up and make everything funnier, so. Yeah, Richard Kind. Richard That'd Kind. Yeah. Um, yeah. These these guests, I, guess, I don't know. I guess regulars that you've had on the show, um, Wanda Sykes, Molly Shannon. I mean, well, she was in your movie as well. But uh, she's someone who you like. She's so great, and you sort of take them for granted. They're so great. Like every moment they're on screen, it's just they just kill it. Wanda Sykes is so convincing all the time too. Yeah. Um, Richard Kind, and there's Beck, and also uh, Heidi you had on. Heidi Gardner, really and Julio Torres, and... Mm -hmm. Andy Ridings. Andy Ridings, um, who was the roommate in this right? pilot. Yeah, everyone's so good. Yeah, Molly's so good. And Molly gets like a, a real a real story, and she's just so fun to watch on set, yeah. The magic of Molly, I think, is that you're at work with her, and you're like, you're not, you're just, that's just you, like constantly. Yes. and. Like all the hands and like yeah. everything, and you're just like, what are you doing? And then, it, but in, in an amazing way, and you're like talking to her, and it's incredible. And then you watch it, and it's just like it's perfect. Yeah, I, I told Chris and Sarah, I was like, if it ever looks like the actor acting across from her is just a huge fan of hers, <laughs> and is just going, <laughs> like, tell me to knock it off. 
Because I was just, when you're acting across from her, I'm like, oh my God. Oh, it's so close to me. It. Truly, I mean, that's how I felt with like yeah. Wanda and stuff. It was so yeah. crazy. And because we, she, like, we met her for the first time on set. Mm -hmm. We had cast her, but we hadn't met her before. And it was so weird to just be like, yes, of course, peer and coworker, absolutely not. It was very bizarre yeah. to direct her or talk to her at all. I don't know. It was very fun. There's also something so nice about working with SNL people like Molly and Beck and Heidi is their, you know their work ethic is second to none because that show makes people have that work ethic and yeah. the specificity and the professionalism. So going into it with Molly and with those guest stars, it was so nice just knowing we spoke a common language and they would just like show up and be great. And because we've worked with them before, so hopefully we had a sense of kind of how to write for them or what they would, what we like them doing the most, like what kind of character we like to see them play. So that was fun. So you had them in mind before you shot, like you, you, you was yeah, it? Yeah, sometimes. We knew we wanted to work with Beck, but that, part in particular we actually had Josh who plays Lance oh, yeah. read for that role and we had him read for a couple roles and we ended up writing the part of Lance to him because he was so specific and funny and so that was one of the rare cases where we really were like this person we need to create for him mm -hmm. um, but then when we wrote the part that Heidi plays which is later in the season um, we just like knew yeah. when we had written it yeah, that yeah. she would be the best at it she, yeah. she was great uh, do you guys watch SNL now? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. I'm annoyed that I'm missing it right now. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy no, to I be here, but I still yeah. do watch it. I, I still yeah, do. I it's on at 8.30 now. Because the 8.30, uh, yeah. yeah. It's Lauren's birthday today. Oh, Aww. shit. Okay. That, thank, you, thank you for telling me <laughs> that. Thank you for telling me that. That's is great. Is he not here? He's no, not he's here. not here, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I watch it obsessively. I watch it all yeah? the time. Oh, yeah. yeah I still I watch it. I love it. You know the show, right? Saturday Night Live. <laughs> now, at the end of, um, well, speaking of SNL, how did you know it was time for you to leave? Or, or how was that, that process for you? Well, we were there, we had been there for six years, and our last season was like the election season, and we were the head writers, and so that was amazing. We were so grateful to be there and feel like a part of the conversation and have this outlet to like, shit on people <laughs> but I think like having that been our last season and keeping up with this constant news cycle and having to know at all times what every horrible person was doing really like exhausted us a little bit and so when we were thinking of some what to do next we were kind of like can we just tell stories in a pop culture world that are completely different a narrative that is not political and it excited us so we kind of just went that way <laughs> great um, <laughs> really, we're, we're lucky, you know, that we get to see, I love seeing this, like, uh, this version of you, it's great. Um, at the end, you know what I mean, like, the sort of progression. What's gonna happen to sketch comedy, by the way? I, I, <laughs> what do you mean? I, I don't know. We're not the what's, <laughs> what's next? Uh, like, weird. what's next in sketch comedy? Yeah, I can't. That's I the question just, for I our just, panel. I just, <laughs> I just don't know. That's, that's a question I'm asked uh, that I want all of us to ask. I'm assuming you're all sketch <laughs> comedy writers. You know? um, at the end, uh, I'll just jump from that. There's, there's something I know at the end of episode eight, it gets really, it gets pretty serious, uh -huh. pretty dramatic. Uh, so I'm thanking you for that. It's great that you like, it, it's really crazy, the whole thing, but then it's at episode eight, it's, you do such a great job. Oh, you both do a great job. I'm saying that is, a, I think that's a difficult thing to do. Um, damn it, how do I turn that into a question? Uh, <laughs> why now? No, that's not right. <laughs> uh, uh, what was, what was you, why sees, uh, episode eight? Why was that the moment that you wanted to sort of, or at the end of it? You're talking about listen through, listen through? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. <laughs> it's really good. It, I don't know. It's kind of like we, like what I was saying before, we want it, we want this to be a comedy, and it is a comedy, but we wanted it to be very grounded, and so we wanted to be like, what are the things we have experienced in our lives, or that they could experience, like relationship problems, like like why, like it's not just I think for Carrie. Oh, I'm jealous of my little brother, but it's like why, why is it working for him? What does he have that I don't have? And I think sometimes the answer is like, it doesn't matter. It's luck, it's chance, it's timing. Sometimes it just happens for someone and it doesn't happen for someone else. But then also it could be like, maybe 
I'm not comfortable in my own skin. Maybe I don't know who I am. Maybe I'm making out with my straight roommate even though I'm gay. Like, we were trying to think of, like, what our little problems that he would have to deal with slowly over time while still being in a comedy. Um, and so we were curious about, like, w different ways in which things could come to a head. Um, so it's, it stays a comedy throughout, but... There were a couple days where Drew was like, I've cried three days in a row on this Comedy Central show. Yeah. <laughs> we were like, yeah, they'll be spaced out when we edit them. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to give it away. Or I do want to give it away. It's just that no. he's crying at the end, like, right into the camera. and It's pretty close. It's just great. Yeah, he, he had... He wouldn't talk to he us. Had, he had he to came to work it. and he was like, don't talk to me. Yeah. You had to, without saying what it is, you do have to do a take where you cried yeah. in real time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Under started me. dry. And, and I come from UCB. Started like, dry. <laughs> <laughs> started dry. Yeah, he comes from UCB, yeah. so we yeah, were yeah. like, he's not going to be able he's to do this. Gonna this is going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get, there was like seven people with like cayenne pepper. Like, if you need this, we'll put it in your eyes. Well, he, so you, we did it three times. Yeah. You cried on the drop of a hat the first time. We were like uh -huh. so impressed. The second time we were like, this is insane. <laughs> and then on the third time we were like, he's sick. Something's wrong with him. Yeah. Like, someone shouldn't be able to cry this fast this much. Yeah, I was I was talking to somebody. Like, I was like, yeah, you know, I come from like a sketch improv background. Like, I usually wear mustaches and big wigs. And like, now I'm doing this show. And now like, I'm crying. And I was like, well, and they were like, how did you do it? And I was kind of like, well, I just uh, got sad over the weekend. <laughs> and they were like, I don't think that's an acting technique. But this like, that's dangerous to your personality. And I was like, well, I had to do it. But the show is also still a pop culture romp, you know? Yes. <laughs> but it, it is, though. Um, I will say that just quickly, that was a testament to Comedy Central that they really trusted us and let us kind of go into those like darker, sadder, a little more serious places because our show is a comedy, as we've said, <laughs> as, as too many times. But um, they really like let us explore some of those stories, and I think there's like a nice, there's such a nice payoff if you're like, ha 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 ha. Oh, it's very. It, it, it was, really that's works. How you want your yeah, that's. <laughs> But um, Helene's arc, as it were, I loved wh where that went because she, she sort of ends up being, can I give it away a little bit? Um, it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> like, I'm not gonna watch it, right? Uh, well, I hope you this? watch it, though. <laughs> well, what if we do this? What if uh, this part gets edited out when it goes out? Um, speaking of which, let's do a quick plug. Uh, hey, check out Vulture. <laughs> <laughs> they use the, they use those. Yeah, the <laughs> um, uh, but it's great. She goes. For, she sort of uh, becomes his assistant, and you think it's going to go one way, but she sort of really takes to it. It's uh, such an optimistic, uh, great thing. Yeah, it's fun. It was fun to play somebody who pivots so dramatically, almost. I mean, I think that. Uh, <laughs> gross as an actress. <laughs> well, <I've, laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, I've taken pivots in my, in my own life and in career and, and changed directions. And I was doing a lot of theater and I started doing more television and I actually broke my ankle dancing and <laughs> had to pivot. And so I think that, again, it's like we're talking about how we're influenced by what's going on with our brother. It's like, well, how do I take this and turn this into something I can use and empower me and make me better or I don't know, you know, mm -hmm. turn it around. And so that's what she does. And, you know, you basically, I think uh, to me, because, you know, as an actress, really the only indication is that my hair gets better as the season goes on. <laughs> it does. She like washes her hair. <laughs> And mine gets worse. Yeah, his gets way worse. Uh, yeah, no, we always said that ca that Drew's character like kind of resents his little brother's fame a little bit because he's jealous, and you don't resent it. You're like, he's hot, cool, and killing it, and I'm hot, cool, and killing it. Well, the two of us are hot, cool, and killing it. So to you, you're like, oh, and then Carrie's the other one. Like you are, you don't realize that you are not not it. Yeah, I'm like, get on this wagon, buddy. This is cool. <laughs> yeah, the family dynamic is great. It really seems like a, a family. I won't go into the dad death. Yes, don't. Ah, oh, damn it. I won't go in, no, there's an added detail about it that is so good. Yeah, don't, don't, don't talk about it. I won't, I won't. But there was a part of me that was like, ah, oh, that's such a good idea. Like, it's such a, I could steal it if I, there's a way to steal it. I figured it out. 
Wow, it just doesn't air till... Showing you the season, we just handed you a bomb. We just... Oh, yeah. <laughs> you could destroy the show at any yeah, time. Yeah, because this comes out January 24th. Yeah, so that won't air till March. I've got a couple months. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think... Why don't we get some questions from the audience? What do you guys think of that? Sure. Well, let's take a vote first. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> He's voting yes. <laughs> hey, what's up, man? Um... First of all, thank you two in advance for, your, por for por for your performances. Thank you two for what you've already written thus far. And thank you, man, for your fucking performances and your writing. You're incredible. Thank you. <laughs> I, wanted to, I wanted you two to comment on the stress that comes from working as a writer at SNL. I watched James Franco's documentary on SNL, and it gave me a really good insight on what the fuck happens for seven days, every seven days. And it made me just think that it was extremely stressful, you know? And, and it's just like, you know, those who are actors who want to be on SNL, um, I don't know if they really think about the fucking stress that's on there. And you know, and the poor, and, 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 and the poor, um, okay, I don't want to say poor, but uh, basically those, those, those actors who don't get as much screen time because they didn't write something good enough that week or what have you, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, yeah, it's stressful, but it's good stress. But I mean, you I seem so jolly. Exactly. You seem so jolly, though. Like, how do you... What, well, like, I'm not what? there right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing... That, right. This is my favorite SNL episode so far, because I'm not... You know. Exactly. Um, That's why I want you... I want to... Um, uh, if you may... Uh, if you can comment on the sure. stress that was. What do you think? I, um... I loved the stress of it. Yeah. I, it's just... It is like... For lack of a better word, it's the best education. I... I loved it. I loved it. even at its most stressful. It is you just learn. It's so cheesy to say, but so many lessons about being precious about your own work. You just you start throwing things in the garbage, and it's the best thing for you. Mm -hmm. Just to take all your ego out. I'll just you. I walked in thinking I was such a genius, you know, like come on, my sketch. And then you learn by by listening to the audience. You're like, that, no, this doesn't work. Out. And then you come up with something else. Also, this is a little cheesy, but. I'm gonna use this time to talk about how great Fred is because, I mean, first of all, the fact that he's been doing this panel is like so lovely, so thank you for doing this. But um, when we were at SNL, because we started at the same time, you write all night on Tuesday, writing night, and it's very common for the writers to literally stay and stay up all night and you don't sleep. And you have to write all night and then turn everything by, like, by noon. And so you just don't sleep. And the actors are great and the actors write a lot too, but usually the actors go to bed at like one or two in the morning and they go home and you finish things up. Fred, you were the only cast member, one of the only ones who is there all night, never goes home, works literally in the saddest <laughs> little office yeah. you've ever seen. Yeah, no windows. You've always had the worst office for yeah. no reason. No. The most senior cast member, the worst office. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they would offer to upgrade your office and you yeah. would say, no, thank you, I but, don't like but, windows. <laughs> but it, it was a good yeah. example of it's very stressful, but you would just write so many things at the table. I mean, so many amazing things that you guys ended up seeing, but like weird things, some things that didn't work, some things that were great but just didn't go because they were similar to something else. But it was, as a new writer, coming in very inspiring to be like, oh, you just got to fucking churn it out. And some will work and some won't, but I need to write something that is like, my voice that I like, because sometimes you can get in your head as a new person of being like, what does the show want? What should I do? And it was just inspiring to see someone who'd been there for a while already and still be writing so much good stuff. Oh, geez. Aww. Thank you. It's Aww. true. It's true. Yes, come on. Love man. You. I'm just from the Hollywood streets, man, right out here. <laughs> <laughs> You grew up outside. Right out there. <laughs> walking up and down. That was my school. <laughs> Selling little fake Academy Awards and stuff. My whole family did that. Yes. Uh, were there any sketches or characters that you wrote or didn't make it to air that you wish did? There are a couple that made it to this show, actually, oh, from yeah. SNL. Oh, the, um, his fart commercial, we tried as a sketch at SNL twice. <laughs> And it didn't work. We tried it with Paul Rudd. We tried it with Julie Louis Dreyfus, and then we said Drew Tarver's got to do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Julia, <laughs> Julia couldn't do it. Bring in Drew. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. something else. Oh, yeah. We also the flight thing, but that's not. The flight. Oh, you yeah. Yeah. We Chris had tried to write a sketch about being on a flight, and oh, yeah, I was on a flight with Adam Levine once, and I was like, God, if it crashes, it's going to be Adam Levine, comma others die in a plane crash. <laughs> I will be others. So now we text That's each other whenever someone famous is on a plane. Because you had Terry Hatcher. Yeah. Yep. Terry. So Hatcher, she would have been Terry. She would have been others. Yeah. 
So it's a fun thing to think about when you travel, to think about like who will steal your death from you if you crash. <laughs> I think there's more. Um, you guys can pick someone, yeah. Oh, um, for Chris and Sarah, do you did you have a specific sketch you wrote for Fred or a memory you guys could share that was like especially memorable? <laughs> there was the we um, did high school, high school theater with you when you hosted, which was great. Yeah, <laughs> I got to do it, and I've <laughs> I, well, actually, you described it this way that I looked like someone who won a contest. <laughs> <laughs> I I really felt that way. That it was, it's the, that's a rare thing in life where during the sketch I actually thought like, oh my god, I'm in this sketch because you have to lift these boxes around. <laughs> but didn't we do one? What's the? Uh, there's no Dunkin' Donuts on Main Street. Oh okay. my you god! Guys that, yeah. Me, yeah, that didn't go to the show though, did it? It went only to dress. to dress. That was because there was a the whole joke of we wrote the sketch with. Zoe de Chanel. Yeah. Nice memory. The whole joke of the sketch was that it was like a performance at a funeral, and the joke was that Fred had <laughs> no sound in his ear, in his earbud. <laughs> so he was trying to perform this somber song at a funeral, and he kept being like, I can't hear my, I can't, I'm hearing nothing. Yeah, we're not getting vocals, we're not getting vocals. <laughs> we're not getting vocals. We're not getting vocals. And then we sing that song. <laughs> But during the um, during Zoe Deschanel's monologue, actually, she was supposed to play a, a mandolin. I don't remember a some banjo, a probably, bitch, something probably, and it wasn't plugged in, and so she really had to be like, "I'm not getting, I'm I'm not hearing." And so then wow. Lauren was like, "That just looks like we messed up twice." Yeah. So I yeah, so it. got cut in real time. It was supposed to go. I don't remember. I think so. I, think right? so. I, I don't uh, remember. I remember. Live TV, baby. Yeah. <laughs> And we wrote, I think we wrote one thing together. Well, the, one of the very first things I, I say I wrote, but I didn't, I was like put on as a new baby was the thing with John Mulaney, where's the one man show that you were in. <laughs> it was like a one man show called, what was it? it my, my mother's Italian. Yeah, I'm neurotic or something. And, what was it? Yeah, I'm, I'm in now, therapy yeah, or whatever. I'm there, it's something like that. And it was yeah. just all the worst tropes of being in a one man yeah. show, where it's like when the audience enters, you're already in character sweeping, but... <laughs> Everyone's like, oh God, this is the fucking actor. And I just, I, I like helped on it a little bit, but I was still so new that I was just, like you said, I was just excited to be there. I was like, whoa, I'm doing a Fred sketch. This is crazy. But it's the same sensibility as the high school one. I feel yeah, like we're yeah, in yeah. the same Yeah, zone. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we haven't asked them. Should we ask them how yeah, they're doing? Ask them. <laughs> we're useless. <laughs> uh, anyone else? I'll go. I'll go. Hello. This side. Hello. <laughs> oh, hi. Uh, yes, no, I did have a question that I wanted to ask the actors. I was wondering if, obviously, we only got to see this one episode, but I was wondering if there were, you know, maybe bits or the scenes that came up in later episodes where you guys kind of got to do some alts or got to play, like, during the takes that you had an especially, like, large amount of fun with where they just kind of let you run with it. Yeah, Drew loves that. <laughs> well, I, like, most of the stuff... It, the writing's so good, like, it, it was really kind of like, improv was just kind of like, no, this isn't as good as the actual writing, but like, we would all always like have fun with it. I mean, Ken Marino is, is he just goes insane. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know if, he, in the pilot, I don't know if you guys saw like those little glasses he had that he kept <laughs> messing with, like we were filming, I, I was a huge, I am a huge Kim Marino fan, and I was like, oh my God, I'm doing a scene with him. And he's like, I got these glasses in Paris. I think my character would have them. <laughs> and was just like fidgeting with them and like making a meal out of the glasses. <laughs> and it was so funny. Yeah, we loved those glasses in the edit. <laughs> oh, right? <laughs> huge fan. <laughs> he also called him Chance while we were sitting there and that was not the line. Oh yeah, in a I take. I think he actually yeah. forgot what the character's name was. And then we just used Then he it. was like Chance and we were all like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Who wrote that music by the way? Like the, the Stink song is great. I know, I was gonna say, I actually think he's here. Brett, this is Brett McLaughlin. Leland, yeah. Leland. Woo! He's amazing. Great work. Oh, hi! hi. That's yeah, we, yeah, we have a bunch more. This we have a bunch more music videos and like live performances and stuff throughout the season, and it was insane. He was too. It was kind of dumb that we got someone that good. Like his music is so good that we were like, "This sounds like a real song. We yeah. shouldn't get to have this." Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, we kind of like throughout the season chart the growth of Chase. So he goes from like innocent to not as much. Mm -hmm. um, so it was fun the to have him compose different types of songs for the different stages of his career. Fred is talking about this song that he releases later in the season called Stink, which yeah. is his like biggest pop hit. But we actually had to rewrite that song because uh, the day before, or like a, a week before we started production on it, the song was originally called Drip. And that day, Cardi B released that song. Yeah, it was almost We were like, what verbatim. is the stupidest so song close. that could exist? Drip. And then someone actually re we released it. <laughs> we were like, wow. we wanted a song where like in the show, the people who wrote that song could have plausible deniability that it wasn't inappropriate. Yeah. <laughs> but technically it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. Yeah. Well, Stink still works. It, yeah. it is, yeah. But that's a song that I could put out before January Fuck, 20. no! Why did we do this? You guys messed up. That was dumb. You made it so easy. Uh, I think we have time for one more. What was your biggest challenge in making the show? Oh. <laughs> biggest challenge? I mean, shooting a show is crazy. I mean, shooting a show in New York comes with all sorts of mm -hmm. logistical issues. Um, just based on people being around everywhere. Um, uh, also, the when you know you shoot in the middle of the if you shoot a scene, we did scenes in Times Square. We did a scene on the Brooklyn Bridge. Um, you shoot basically in the middle of the night. <laughs> So yeah, and you shoot on like people's stoops, and like New Yorkers are not like at all charmed by television productions. They're like, "Excuse me, what's going on out here?" And, and good New York accent. <laughs> That's Still the stuff you see that, me in. That certainly was all the accents at once. <laughs> it was every. You're from everywhere. Yeah. He's a New Yorker who grew up in Georgia. <laughs> Yeah, and also, like, I've never done a job more than, like, three days in a row. So, like, and they were like, yeah, it's just three months. And I was like, oh, God. Um, and it was just, like, it was so, it's just so hard to, like, I mean, I've never woke up, like, on a th Wednesday and gotten, like, eight hours of sleep and been like, oh, I'm still tired. <laughs> one of the, well, yeah, one of the things that was the hardest, but that was the most fun, I think, too, or that we liked is the, our idea for the show, we don't really go back to the same locations ever. We shot all around New York City, but the idea, it's a lot of, not bottle episodes, but a lot of the, a lot of the episodes are about them, but are at a thing for him. So all the episodes are called like Chase goes to a premiere, Chase turns, has a birthday party, Chase releases his album. So it's always at different huge events or places. And so we don't just like go back to their apartments every episode. So it made it, it and we shot most episodes in like four days. So it was a lot of big places, but our production team and all our designers were incredible. But yeah, it was a lot of there, there is one location where we end up living that we that is in three or four episodes, yeah. but we only had three days at that location, so we were jumping between three episodes like three times a day, and so your brain Wait. is like, where am I? Which one was it? What was the location? It's the house that we live in. I don't want to reveal. <laughs> okay, it's okay. They, um, Case and Mom and Pat, the mom, moved to New York while Case oh, does yes, his yes, album, yes. and they move into Justin Thoreau's apartment. Yeah. <laughs> Because we were like, what is just the weirdest, worst place for a child to live? <laughs> did you have to get permission? We did. Yeah. He said, likeness yeah. And, okay. Yeah, he was great. But yeah, we were just like, the, we were like, he's shooting a movie in Europe, and so his house is empty, so Pat Dubeck and Chase Dreams <laughs> live there. And so we just made some bold choices on what that house would look like. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I think that's it. Uh, we'll do a, uh, a one hour break, and we'll come back and do the second <laughs> half. But thank you all so much for coming. Yeah, thank you. And yeah, thanks for, thanks watching, for watching it. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Thanks, Fred. Yeah. Thanks, you guys. Yeah, thank you very much to Fred Armisen. Fred. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.